What's up guys? Welcome back to part 5 of the IQ tutorial series. In this video I will be covering everything you need to know about actions in IQ. So let's get started by going into the actions tab and hitting the plus button which will add in a new action. Now here you'll see this little drop down menu and when you drop it down there is a whole bunch of options. I'm gonna go through all of these starting with macro. Macro allows you to record any series of key presses. To start recording, simply click the record macro button at the bottom of the screen. Now you can begin typing out anything on your keyboard and it will get recorded. Okay, so now I have what I want saved on this macro. All I need to do is select the key which is going to trigger this macro. For this example, I'll just select F1. Now let's go over to Notepad and test out this macro. When I hit F1, it will type out my text. You might notice there is a delay, and that's because the macro also recorded the delay between each key press. You can disable recording delays completely by unchecking the delays box. If you want to remove delays that are already recorded, you can press the button that says delete all delays. If you want to remove specific delays or specific events, you can select it and then press the X button that says delete selected event. Now that I've deleted a key press event, it's warning us in red that there needs to be a key release event for this press key right shift event or else it will continue pressing that key. So that's something you should look out for. The button next to it allows you to copy a selected event and the button next to that allows you to paste it. You can also use the typical shortcut on your keyboard known as Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste. If you want to undo changes, you can press the undo button, or you can also use the keyboard shortcut known as Ctrl Z. If you'd like to add a specific delay between all key presses, you can press the button that says add delay between all events. Now you'll get this little menu that lets you type what delay you want in milliseconds. Or you can also do a random delay between two values. And finally, you can delete all events and start from scratch with the trash can button. Some other cool things that IQ lets you do is record mouse events. You can record mouse clicks, mouse wheel scroll, and mouse movement. This allows you to create some very useful macros. Also, technically, to create the macro, you don't need to use the record button. You can use the insert new event button and you can create an entire macro from just that if you have the patience. Just make sure when you create a key press event that you also add in a key release event unless you want a specific key to continue being pressed. Under advanced settings, you can select how the action will trigger. There's four options, on key press, on key release, while pressed, and toggle. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Below that is action repeat. You can make the action repeat a certain number of times and create a constant or random delay between each repeat. If you select no repeat, you will be given an option below that, which will allow you to trigger a second action. You can check the box that says retain the original key output to retain the original key output of the button you are using as your macro trigger. Finally, you can select execute uninterrupted if you want the macro to be uninterrupted when you press any other key on the keyboard. Now let's switch over to start settings. Here you can select the specific sound to trigger with the action, but probably the most useful feature here is that you can make a specific lighting effect trigger when this macro is executed. So let's head over to lighting effects and create a simple ripple. Now if we go back to the macro start setting, we can select this ripple effect in the drop down menu. Now when I press F1, this ripple effect will trigger. You can also test it by pressing the test button. This is a useful feature if you want to make effects trigger when you press only one specific key. This has also been a commonly asked question. Someone in my comments asked how you can make the letter A light up when you press only control. I'll quickly go over that. Simply go to your lighting effects tab, create a new solid effect, then select the letter A. Then disable this lighting effect. Now go back into the start settings and select this solid effect. I'll remap this action to control, so now when I press control, the letter A will light up. If you would like to make it last longer, you can go back into the lighting effect and adjust the lighting time. Let's move on to the text action. This one's pretty straightforward. Here you can write any text and you can also apply a delay in milliseconds between each character if you wish to do so. I'll go back into my notepad and test this out. As you can see, it writes out the text with a 100 millisecond delay between each character. The advanced and start settings here are pretty much the same as what you just saw with the macro action, so there's no need to go over that again. Let's move on to the media action. You can use this to create macros that control media. Some Corsair keyboards already have dedicated media keys, so you probably won't care as much about this section unless you're looking to map some media functions onto your mouse. Again, the advanced and start settings here are the same, so we can go ahead and move on to the launch application action. With this action, you can launch a program of your choice. For this example, I'm going to select Photoshop. 
You can also launch your default web browser, email, text editor, calculator, and file explorer. Advanced and start settings are once again still the same. Next up is the timer action. Here you can create a timer up to 24 hours. I do wish that you could manually enter this value instead of being forced to use the arrows. The timer starts when you press the key you selected to trigger the action. There are two choices, you can make the timer continue counting down if you push the trigger button again, or you can make the timer restart if you push it again. Advanced settings are the same, start and stop settings are basically the same, but for this specific action, you would probably want to use the stop function, since you would want it to do something after the timer goes off. Perhaps the simplest action IQ has is the disable action. You can apply this to any key to do exactly what it says. The key will no longer function as anything, it's just an unusable key. This type of action could be useful if you want to create a profile that allows you to clean your keyboard without actually unplugging it. That's if you have the patience to disable every single key one by one because that's what you would need to do to apply this disable action to all the keys. You could also set it so the key is only disabled when the lock button is pressed. The lock button is located here at the top of your keyboard and it varies on some models like the strafe, which has it located on the top right corner. The final action is profile switching. This is a very useful one. Here you can configure all sorts of different profile switching settings. If switching mode is set to switch to next or previous profile from list, it will switch to whatever profile is next or previous on this list. So just to demonstrate this, I'll hit F1 and it should take me to the Cataclysm profile from my World of Warcraft collection. You can add and remove profiles from this list by using these two buttons that say add and remove. You can also reorder everything by simply dragging. If you have the loop list enabled, it will start back at the top of the list when it reaches the end of the list. You can also choose if the profiles included for switching is all profiles or only the ones in the specific folder of the profile with the switching macro. Down here, you can assign this action to all the profiles in the list, so that way when you hit F1, you can keep pressing F1 to rotate between all the profiles. This makes it easy so you don't have to manually assign this action to the F1 key on all profiles. You can also do a direct profile selection. So let's say I want to switch directly to the Alliance profile from my World of Warcraft collection. I've used direct profile selection in profiles like my Apex Legends collection to make it easy to select the profile depending on which character you are playing. I assigned the macro to pause break, which would take you to the profile that has the color-coded selectors, which corresponds to a specific profile. Finally, you can make direct profile selection only happen while the key is pressed. The moment you let go, it will return to the same profile. That basically covers everything under the actions column. One final thing I'd like to mention, there is an actions library where you can store macros you've worked on and it makes it much easier to transfer over custom actions to other profiles. You can store stuff into the library by pressing this save to library button right here. Then all you have to do is go to another profile, drag it in from the actions library, and you have to remap the key because it doesn't save the key you have it mapped to. This covers everything there is to know about actions in IQ. I hope I've made your experience with IQ a little bit easier. And thanks to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. If you aren't a supporter and you would like to be, then consider checking out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Stay tuned for part 6 of the IQ tutorial series.